dearest. One can forget being cold so long as there is something to be seen. And it's only when one stops seeing that self enters in. Mary Rorick was born in Greenville, Kentucky in 1906, the youngest of her family. Her father was influential in encouraging his family to see the world. His work on Greenville's newspaper, The Record, frequently emphasized the area's cultural events, such as shows at the Lamede Opera House, academic lectures, recitals, and Louisville's May Music Festival. Despite the small town feel, the Rorick saw the cultural beauty of the world. In 1929, while her older sister Carol was studying abroad in Paris, Mary decided to take an adventure of her own. So on May 25th, Mary boarded a ship traveling from New York to Paris, a several days journey full of shuffleboard, deck tennis, and new friends. The bustling environment of Paris surely contrasted that of Greenville, Kentucky. Mary took great care in documenting every expenditure and memory she made along the way. As her sister studied for her exams, Mary took in all the art and history the city had to offer. Culture certainly wasn't lost on her either. She collected postcards, attended plays, and even commissioned dresses from a Parisian dressmaker. With Carol's exams completed, the pair set off on a proper European tour. Their next destination was a stop in the Bernese Alps, another stark contrast to the bustling atmosphere of Paris. Mary collected roses from the Alps to press as a reminder of their time there. A train trip down Italy was next on the travel docket. The sisters traveled on a packed train from Milan to Rome, having to sit on luggage instead of in seats. Camera in hand, Mary and Carol visited the major sites of Rome, from the Colosseum to the Roman Forum. Mary carefully noted the major artwork she was able to see, from da Vinci to Michelangelo. They saw Venice next, taking a gondola from their pension when they arrived. Their visit to the city included seeing a concert, watching glass blowing and lace making, and even befriending two Italian officers. After just two days in Venice, the sisters hopped aboard a steamer to Germany. The sisters visited Opera Miguel, the home of the original Passion Play. While they were there, they met Anton Lang, a German potter and actor that had previously played Jesus Christ. Mary and Carol toured his studio and met his son while Lang signed postcards for them. Back in Rothenburg, Mary was surprised to run into a friend, Roscoe Oglesby. She and Carol donned their Paris frocks and joined Roscoe and his companion Kenneth for dinner and drinks, excited to see familiar faces in such a new place. From organ recitals to visiting museums, Mary took in all the culture that London had to offer. A lover of theater, however, she made a special visit to Stratford-upon-Avon, Shakespeare's home. Having seen many plays on her journey abroad, the home of one of England's greatest treasures was not something she could miss. Unfortunately, on August 8th, it was Carol's turn to head back home. But Mary did not let loneliness prevail. She charged ahead on her own, taking a sleeper train to Edinburgh. While taking in the city on her own, however, she did not forget to write home. Glasgow, Scotland, August the 12th, 1929. Yesterday, I left Edinburgh in a downpour. Arrived in Glasgow, some past noon, to find the sun out. I tried to get in the YW here but both branches were full, so the woman sent me to the Scotch Girls Friendly Society home. All they had was a cubicle. A cubicle is one-fourth, or maybe less in some cases, of a room. 
The walls are about six feet high, not too high to keep one light from doing four people, I can assure you. From my bed, I can open the dresser drawers, the door, and the window. Nothing like it for resting my legs. After unpacking as much as I dared, the cubicle is lockable only from the interior, I set out for Loch Lomond. Tis only an hour's ride from here to Balloch, where it begins. On a high hill over the loch is Balloch Castle. It is only a tea place now, so I didn't go in. Through a meadow where sheep are grazing, one could meander to the loch, which I did. It isn't nearly as pretty as the Switzerland Lakes Carol, but it is beautiful in its own way. Walked out on the pier and stuck my feet in the water. Had on my rain boots so it wasn't as foolish as it sounds. It wasn't long before Mary, too, had to return to the United States. She brought back with her, however, documents and memories that would inspire her for years. After thousands of miles of travel, she had learned just as much about the world as she had learned about what she was capable of doing. This will be my last letter, I'm sure. Can hardly wait to see you and talk instead of writing. All my love, Mary E.